Welcome to another edition of Susie's Las Vegas. I have a very special guest today, Tony. Tony, let's let's go with your name and all about you. What do you think about that? Wow. Okay, we're going to start there. Well, first, my, first, my name is Tony Pereira. Okay. So, uh, and all about me. Wow. So, we should we start? I was born in uh, Newark, New Jersey. There you go. So, I'm from the East Coast, as you can tell by the accent. Yes. And uh, born and raised, and uh, spent uh, you know most of my uh, my corporate career on the on the East Coast, but but uh, around the world with Accenture, and uh, traveled. You know, I worked in 16 different countries, lived in four. Wow. wow. Along what the way. is Accenture? Accenture for? is a um, multi-billion dollar corporation, trades on the stock exchanges, ACN. They are known for strategy, digital operations, technology, and consulting. Wow. Those are the five pillars across all the industries. So banking, capital markets, uh, you know, things like... Um, uh, pharmaceuticals, all, all the business, whatever top one, you know, the Fortune 100 companies, you'll find Accenture in there and every government across the, we, right now, when I left, we were at 450,000 people. Today, they're at three quarters of a million. Wow. A million, rather, I should say, three quarters of a million. <laughs> so, uh, 750,000, you know, it's, it's gone quite a bit. I've been, yeah. I've been gone since 2017. That's how much it's grown. Wow. So what happened after 2017? Tell, tell us so, about that. Uh, yeah, well, there's, I, I usually call my, my career, my, my, my movement into music as a bit of an ooze because people, when people look at ret people that retire, so I retired from Accenture in 2017 right. after 19 years with them and, you know, different jobs before that. But um, all along the way, though, since 1969, I've been playing guitar and I never stopped. And, it, you know, for a little while I did it. As a, as a profession, and then said, "Wow, you know, this is like I just didn't like being broke." Mm -hmm. So that's smart. I, yeah. So I, I I think a lot of times the smartest the smart musicians figure out how to monetize yeah. and how to keep different irons in the fire. Sure. But uh, what I did is I went down a corporate route, but I still kept my kept my uh, my uh, hand in it, and along the way, making sure that I had you know great teachers. Like uh, in the beginning, I had High White, who was with the CPS Orchestra. Wow. And because uh, I lived in New Jersey, so I had access sure. to New York City. Yeah. So you were right there. Yeah, I was right there. I was, yeah. uh, you know, all I do is uh, hop a bus and I'd be in Port Authority Terminal, which is down, you know, which is Midtown. Sure. At, you know, within 10 minutes. Hmm. So, uh, you know, guys like uh, High White, and then from High White, I went to South Salvador, and South Salvador with Stan, was with Stan Ken. And if you look at the, uh, here, watch the movie Blackboard Jungle. Oh, yeah. There's, on the soundtrack is Adventure for Guitar and Trumpet. It's him and, and uh, Maynard Ferguson on trumpet. Yeah. Playing in that movie. Wow. So it's on the soundtrack. It was a big, it was a big, uh, big composition that was done. Put mm -hmm. Sal on the map. So I studied with Sal for several years. And then um, after him, I, uh, and all those times playing gigs, but working, playing gigs, working. So I would say that if you look at your life of being in, and how much you're going to focus on, t you know, where your time is going to sure. be, yeah, you know, it was probably the corporate world was less and music was more like this. Oh, yeah. But, um, but I always kept my hand. And uh, then I was fortunate enough to meet dumb luck again. And what, of course, they say what luck is preparation Absolutely. and opportunity yeah. is, is what luck really is. Uh -huh. And I got to meet uh, Lou Paulo. Lou Paulo was Les Paul's guitar player yeah. who sat next to Les for tech really over 40 years, but officially 26 years starting in 18, 1985 until Les died in 2009. And uh, Lou, for some reason, took a liking to me. And we were at a workshop. Uh, I was the only guy in the room that could read music. So I was playing the, the, the melody and while everybody else was learning how to play, because Lou was known as a big rhythm player, even though he sure. was great with melodies and could accompany anybody. Wow. So Lou took a liking to me, gave me his phone number, and he said to me, yeah, why don't you keep, keep in touch? So I did. And it was yeah, a great opportunity. You know? <laughs> and, um, and then what he would do is he'd invite me to come out and sit in. He wouldn't give lessons. He just had no patience for lessons. But his way of teaching was, he goes, you don't need lessons, you need to play. Just so, play. So he'd bring you right on and say, okay. Yeah, do something. And then what happened was I noticed I was getting, I knew when he was liking me better is I'd spend more time on the bandstand. So maybe I'd be a, a couple of songs. And then next sure. time I show up, maybe the, uh, the whole set, yeah. the last set. And then all of a sudden I played the second and third set. And then all of a sudden we were there one night at this restaurant I liked to play. And, um, and I would go. It was like a Wednesday night whenever I was in town. Sure. Because I was traveling a lot. I was like on the road almost 46 weeks of the year. Wow. And, uh, 
And Lou uh, one night said to me, well, do you want to have dinner first? Or do you want to come up and join me? You know, <laughs> I can eat dinner anytime. Yeah. So I got up there and uh, started playing with Lou. We had an 18 year relationship basically until he died in 2020. Wow. At, he was 84 when he died. Eight, no, 80, 80, no, he's 86. He was 86 when he died and uh, kept active until probably three months before. And act, my personal opinion yeah. is the COVID shutdown killed him. Is that what is that he was one of those guys that as long as he could play, no matter what is going on with his health, as long as he could play and be in front of an audience, he would keep going. In fact, when I, I used to hang out with Les Paul too, yeah, uh, because of course Lou I knew him through sure. Lou, and, Le, yeah. and I would remember said to Lou to Les rather, because he was doing Monday nights at the Iridium, and uh, he packed it <laughs> two, two he, he packed two shows, 150, 300 people a night on a Monday night. And you'd have like Keith Richards would show up and Paul McCartney would show up. Uh, Richie Sambora from Bon Jovi would show up. You know, Tony Pereira would show up. Yeah. And, uh, we don't, yeah, and I got to sit in with Les too. But I said to Les, how's it feel to pack, you know, pack this place every, yeah. every Monday? Yeah. He goes, to me, Tony, if I didn't have this, he said, I'd be dead. Yeah. Sure enough, in 2009, when he, his health really faltered and he was out of commission for like six weeks, Boom, he was gone. How was that? And uh, and I always wow. felt that Lou it was the same kind of thing with Lou. Is that sure. uh, once he couldn't once he couldn't pick up that guitar, and I remember one of our last conversations, he said to me, oh, Tony, I just can't play anymore. And I could hear it in his voice. It was killing him. It was killing him. Yeah, oh. that man just loved to play. Oh, but he didn't like, sure. like to practice, though. Like, yeah. he never played at home. Like, I like, I'll practice, I'll play at home. Sure. I'll work on things. But yeah. Lou only picked up a guitar when he was at, at a bandstand. Wow. And, and if he had an idea, he might pick something up at home. Yeah. But never, he was never one to like play for hours. I could sit down. You could ask my wife. I mean, she'll, you yeah. know, so I'll disappear for like five, six hours working on stuff. So um, well, she must love it listening to you. And she's a big fan. Yeah. Uh, she's a, she's a big big supporter, big fan. I mean, there's like if you look at my posters, like for Tony Pereira's Guitar Night and all that stuff, sure. she does all the artwork. Really? Yeah, she does well, all she that. She does wonderful. Yeah, she's uh, she's got a great artistic eye. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm terrible. So that's why you know, she, she'll get the right fonts. And she'll you know, labor over. How long have you guys been together? Uh, well, we've been together since 2013. We've been married since 2018. Oh, okay. So she's, so she's uh, your angel. My angel? She's your angel. Your wife is your angel. Oh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. yeah. She would tell me that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah. you know so then we evolved you know talking about playing and, sure. uh, and then I was doing a quintet last year and then um, I was I was playing around town where I was uh, sitting in and you know, that gets kind of old after a while because yeah. you only do two three songs you don't want to be a bother yeah and you know and uh, you know people need to do their act so they would so I would never walk in with a guitar I, they would say to me do you have your guitar it'd be in the car I would never walk in with a guitar ever. But I would get invited. Then I then uh, then uh, then I started saying, well, you know, I really want to do kind of my own stuff, meaning sure. not so much my own material, but what I like to do, which is the great American song I'm playing. So we did a bunch of that last year. Then I was playing in some other because I, I you know I read really well, so I get jobs like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then I called up uh, John Wiedemeyer from the he's with the Beach Boys now, but John's been around the town okay. for twenty years. Yeah. Righteous Brothers the whole bit. Yeah, I called John Wiedemeyer last year and I said to him, you know, I want to do a guitar night. Mm -hmm. I want you, you know, you want to join me on this thing? He goes, I'd love to. Yeah. So we tried to do it last year. And then what happened was the uh, the gig that we had booked kind of fell through. And then the next time I was able to book one, uh, John called me up. He says, ah, I really can't take the job. I said, why not? I just got signed with the Beach Boys. Now, if you're going to get turned <laughs> down, that's a great reason to get turned well, down, right? Just, yeah. yeah, I mean, you can't get mad at the guy. No, you no, know, all no. you can do is like, hey, good luck, great. Yeah. So then... Um, we, uh, I was doing some other playing, and then uh, around November, I pinged him again for some other reason, and we were texting. And I said, you know, if you want to do this, I said, I, I've got an opportunity to go do this at, at Alexis Park at, uh, and the, at the resort there, and there's a stage. I said, we can go do this. Sure. And one of the nice things about being retired is that I could incubate ideas like I used to do at Google and Facebook because they were my clients. Right. And we would inc incubate new business ideas. And this to me is a new business idea. You don't see, you see, you see Guitar Nights, you used to see them on the West Coast. John right. Pisano did one for 20 sure. years. He was with Herb Albert. And then currently in New York City, Frank Vignola is doing it every Wednesday night at Birdland. So, but we had nothing here. And uh, you have a lot of piano duos, you have a lot of pianos with voice, that kind of thing, but you don't see much with the guitar. So I said to John, look, I've got an opportunity. So we grab, I grabbed John. Uh, first thing we used on that one was Lisa Gay, and because uh, she was the also the artistic director at the Lesks Park, and I brought in Adam Shendell, who's been here forever. Oh, yeah. You know Adam, right? Yes, I do. And uh, Brian yeah, Charay on bass. Wow. So we did our first night. And we're like, that's a lot of fun, and we got some good feedback. So I said, well, let's do it again. Yeah. So then we uh, 
what we did is we did a pop-up jazz club at the Italian American Club. <laughs> and, we did, and so I went to Ben. I went to Ben and Jimmy. I said, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And there's a room next to the, uh, you know, the main room. There's the Sinatra right. room. Yeah, so I said, well, let's do the Sinatra room. Right. And, I, and I gave Ben just kind of like a germ of an idea. I said, yeah. and, you know, he goes, how do you want it set up? I said, let's set it up like we're in a jazz club. Yeah, and uh, we did. We set up in front of the in front of the bar, and the, if you're familiar with the Sinatra room, it's it's long, and yeah. so we did. We so a lot of acts when they go in there, they go against the wall, and they have the width of the room. Right. We we switch. Oh, you did the other. We're way. at the bar, oh, so okay. we're in front of the bar. Sure. We set up there, and and get, get the length, got the length of the room. Yeah. Janine, who works there oh, too. Oh, I love Janine. Yeah, Janine. So what she did was she yeah. set up this little area outside the room to take tickets. So it looked like you're walking into a jazz club. Wow. They did a great job. Yeah. So we did another night, and that particular night it was again John Wiedemeyer on guitar, uh, me of course on guitar, uh, Adam Schendel on drums again, Bram Sheree on bass, but this time we had Wendy Carianis oh, on vocals. Oh, all right, yeah. And uh, Wendy, very popular around town, she did a great job. So sure. we got that one off the ground, pretty successful. You know, we're getting close to getting the room, you know, Filled profitable. Up. Yeah. And then, um, and then I, uh, then I approached uh, Max and Jazz. And uh, I don't want to date the show because I know you can watch this anytime, but we yeah. have another gig coming up there. Okay. And I called, and Max, I did a bunch of gigs for him last year with a different configuration. So he knows me pretty well. He knows I know his club. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked him if he wanted to do, you know, consider you doing a guitar night there. And he was like, yeah, sure, let's bring it in here. So we have that one coming up, and it's going to be the same configuration at Wendy on, Wendy on vocals and the rest of the band as we talked about. And um, that one, normally we do like a, 92 uh an hour and 40 minute show this one was going to be like more like a, a you know a gig in a lounge so we're going to yeah. do it three hours really so and, wow that'll uh, be try fabulous. to configure it in such a way too that we <laughs> we we don't stop because i use uh, i also you'll see on here yeah seven string i play a seven string guitar oh you do i do and i'm probably wow. only, maybe the only one only jazz guy in the guy in the city that maybe is probably playing seven string uh the last guy after he just died and um unfortunately because he was a great player and um, so we're doing that. So we could, you know, with the, with the seven string kind of play by yourself with a bass note. You know, so that's sure. kind of what we do. Yeah. So that's uh, that's been me the last several months. Well, it sounds like you're happy, happy as a clam, aren't you? I like to play. Yeah. You know, and I and and uh, and, and I think trying to drive this new business idea is uh, probably fits a little bit my wheelhouse too. Sure. Of like I said, when I was with Accenture, we did a lot of that. We did a lot of. Um, you know, like I said, what we would do with Google and Facebook is we would take their whatever new business they would try to incubate, and they right. they would give. You know, um, maybe people don't know this, but yeah, you, know, you could be a, you could be this. like a twenty five year old manager at Facebook or Google, yeah. and you'll get twenty five million dollar budget before you have to ask permission to do anything. Twenty five million. Yeah, you'll get. Oh yeah, God. exactly. Yeah, I mean, so they they give them a lot of latitude to incubate. So you yeah. you you pitch your idea. And what they'll do is say, okay, fine, you know, you got like 20 to 25 million, go forth and play and see what yeah. you can do. What we did for them is we helped them with those businesses, but once the business scaled and need to be industrialized, right. that's what we stepped in. Oh, because all right. that's what we did. We could take it and we could scale. So if you were you, if they, they could get the business going for about, say, five or 10 people, kind of get the idea going. Then you would bring in somebody like us at Accenture and we could scale it up to a thousand. <laughs> with uh you know with uh it's not like that's as much quite as, a life there yeah it was had. it was it was interesting we yeah. did like i had well i had i had uh at the end of uh, accenture when i was leaving i had north and south america operations so i had uh let's say I had google and facebook i had telefonica yeah. down in brazil i had uh, finance and accounting uh, outsourcing that was sitting in argentina i had our um in Costa Rica is where we did a lot of digital marketing. So things like you see, like on Pfizer, their website, yeah. things like that. That's we, Costa that was all. That was all us. That was you. Yeah, that was all our all, oh. all my team. Uh, you know, you, you know your news feed that pops yeah. up on Facebook. Yeah. That was my team. That was yours. Yeah, that was my team. That could, we worked with Facebook on how to how to teach the algorithms to basically teach the computer. So you use human beings to teach computers. Wow. That's what you do. That That's where totally AI comes amazing. into play. Yeah. And all that is that what we're doing for that is that humans teach the computer. And and then and then they then then you QA the computer. So you know when you see a lot of people are talking about AI yeah. and oh my God, what are we going to do about it? There's yeah. three things you need to there's three ways to combat automation. Tony? Oh. Hold hold the hold that thought. We will we're, we're going to stop for a hard break and we'll be right back. Thank you. 
Are you dreaming of a cruise getaway with friends or family? Discover the incredible benefits of booking a group tour cruise with Diamond Travel. Benefit number one, shared experiences. There's nothing like sharing the magic of travel with loved ones. A group tour cruise creates unforgettable moments, from exciting shore excursions to onboard entertainment, making every experience more enjoyable when shared. Benefit number two, cost savings. One of the perks of group travel is cost savings. With Diamond Travel, you can enjoy exclusive group discounts, making your dream cruise more affordable without compromising luxury. Benefit number three, group dining. Indulge in delectable cuisine together. Group tours often include reserved dining options, ensuring your group can savor gourmet meals while enjoying each other's company. Benefit number four, hassle-free planning. Forget the stress of planning individual itineraries. Our expert planners at Diamond Travel care for all the details, ensuring a seamless experience from booking to disembarkation. Benefit number five, celebrate together. Whether it's a milestone birthday, anniversary, or a long-awaited reunion, a group tour cruise provides the perfect setting to celebrate special occasions surrounded by those who matter most. Your journey should be as unique as you are. I'm Susie Celine Lipsky, and I'm here to give you your dream getaway. Visit diamondtravel.com to book your adventure today.
Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank oh my you. God, that was fabulous. So, so tell us. The, it, it. So that particular oh tune God. is uh, How High the Moon. So what yeah. we're doing in our show is we talk about different guitar players over the years and our right. influences. Yeah. That particular one was uh, done by Les Paul in 1952 with Paul, Mary Ford as a vocal. Yeah. And oh. As a vocal, it was, it was his number two hit. Uh, uh -huh. Vio Cadiz was their number one hit for Les Paul and Mary Ford. Yeah. This was their number two hit. So anytime you hear things like Happy Days, soundtracks yeah. on movies, like that, you'll hear more of that song than any other. Oh, wow. So we, uh, we do a little bit of a nod to it because I'm not big on recreating and covering, yeah. but just enough that we, we give you the taste of what Les would have done. Yeah. And uh, so that it's a fun tune and it's, it's one of those things that people love. So you got to, you know, one of these things when you're playing out there is you, you're playing for your audience. You got to sure. play for Absolutely. the people. You know, it, it's, it, it's, well, and it's consumer, right? I mean, yeah. you got to give the people what they like and what they enjoy. Yeah. It's you, you can, if you get up there and you play for yourself, it's gonna be a very short gig. Yeah, very short That's gig right. and very painful because you can feel. It. Yeah, you can feel it. The people are like, oh, is, it, is it over yet? Yeah, you know, like, you know, <laughs> I've been there. You've been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but this is like the time must go by so fast. It, it does. It was funny. My wife said because we did we went over on the last gig, so I, I tried. to do no more than an hour 30 because people yeah. have to sit there for an sure. hour 30, right? Yeah. Because you're doing a show. But we did an hour 40. We got up and, and Pamela was like, you know, she said the people were commenting that, oh, we thought this was going to go, we thought this was going to go longer. We wanted to go longer. Yeah. We're missing things. For us yeah. on stage, we're like this. We look down, we look up, boom, it's over. Yeah. Um, it's quick. Yeah. It's very, yeah. it's very quick. And, and I think we, we also try to go, we do, as I was mentioning during the break, yeah. we like to be more, you know, more uh, melody, less solos. Yeah. You know, because as Les Paul said to me, sure, no one hums your solo. When they walk out of the room, no one's humming your solo. My current guitar teacher, Robert Conti, yeah. will say things like every uh, every song is a memory for someone. Sure. It is. Absolutely. And that's what you're playing to is people's memories. Yeah. 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 Their prom, their wedding, yeah. uh, their deaths, their losses, right? Yeah. Things that maybe playing in the radio when something oh, yeah. like that. You know, uh, there's a big Les Paul uh a Bing Crosby tune called uh, It's Been a Long, Long Time, oh, which was that beautiful too, right? I love it. It first came out in, in the early 40s, mm -hmm. and it was good, and it, yeah. it did well. But in 1946, Les and Bing did it, and now we have to consider what was going on in the country in 1946. Right. World War I, World War II had been over in 1945, but it wasn't like the war was over and everybody came home. No. People had to stay. There was occupational forces. And that song, It's Been a Long Kiss Me Once, Kiss Me Twice, Kiss Me Once Again, It's Been a Long, Long Time, yeah. really resonated in 1946 as people's, people's loved ones were coming home. Right. And that song was a major hit. And, and there's a big memory probably for a lot of people that you know that period who were still alive wow. when their loved ones were coming. Or like by you know the people that had siblings who were, who were young mm -hmm. at that time, maybe That's from right. the silent generation, not so much from the greatest generation, who had siblings like my mother. She had three brothers in the war. But my mother she was born three. in 1935. Yeah. So she was only 10. She was 10 when the war ended. Yeah. But uh, but like I said, it's a memory. And that's what, that's what you try to evoke when you're playing yeah. out there. It's yeah. like, you know, it's not when you're getting up there and you're playing. If you want to play for yourself, there's Griffin Studios here. Yeah. Great studio. <laughs> you sit in there. You guys knock yourselves out play what you want to play. But when you're in front of that audience. It's what they want. You pay attention. Hear. And, yeah. you know, Lou Paulo taught me that. He yeah. would sit there yeah. and he would be out there and he'd divide up the room. Yeah. And he tried different songs. And at the end of the first set, he'd go to me, they like country western. They like 60s. These guys like Frank Sinatra. And he would and he would know. And then at then he wouldn't he wouldn't have a set list. He would be stream of consciousness, which was sure. painful. Oh my because you're sitting God. there, not only did you have to play name that tune, then you had to play name that key. <laughs> so uh, so Les and Lou would go from like you on your toes. Everybody. <laughs> Lou, Lou is one of those guys that he, well you have a lot of guys like here that, yeah. that can do it. like you have Joe Darrow, oh, yeah. who's gonna be ninety oh, this year. God. Joe's another one of yeah. those. You know, he'll like stream yeah. of consciousness. Yeah. Gary Anderson. Yeah, I'll get, uh, Gary the whole is crew. The, yeah, I played yeah. with Gary. Well you were yeah. you were at the For Les sure. Fury. You were at the yeah. Les Fury. I was yeah. I was playing guitar yeah. up there. Yeah. And that's what Gary does. Gary yeah. doesn't call his tunes. He yeah. just starts playing the next one. And then if you're lucky you know the occasionally he might say C. Yeah, or G. Yeah. You might, yeah. You might, if you're but lucky, other than you're, that, that, you're like, oh, shit. Keep with it. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, man, what's he playing? It's like, yeah. oh, name that tune. And then, yeah. you know, fortunately, I know a lot of old tunes, so yeah. they, it's kind of, I mean, occasionally I get stumped, sure. you know. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, you can you can feel your way through it. Oh, my God, they're amazing. Well, well, your life is just, you know, it's full. You know, you, you retired, but you didn't retire. No. You just kept going. 
Well, as I was saying that, uh, you know, talking during the break, I mean, it's like, yeah. it's more of a news, right? So sure. a lot of people when they retire, or so I should say some subset, yeah. if you don't have an idea of what you want to do afterwards, I think you're going to come in for a very hard stop. Oh, yeah. Very hard stop. I've seen a lot of people deteriorate very quickly, yeah. no matter what age. Yeah. And in two years, they're kind of getting either old or gone. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, like I said, you've got several businesses yourself, oh, right? So it's right. like, you know, you're, you're looking towards the next thing. Yeah. You know, I try to keep it that, you know, it's not, I shouldn't say, because I do take it seriously, but I don't want, I, I don't want, I try to keep it that it doesn't become a chore. Right. You, know, you want to enjoy it. I want to enjoy it, but it want to produce a good product. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, I have, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I, I can play with some good players, really good players. I mean, yeah. national players. I mean, you know, John for the Beach Boys. We have Adam Shandell yeah. that was in that cut on drums. Yeah. Yeah. Adam's been here since he was two. His mom is uh, Elaine Dunn, who's a famous... Oh, yeah. Huh? Right, so that's his yeah. mom. Wow. But he was with Wayne Newton. He was with you yeah. know, you pick, uh, the Jerry Lewis Telethon. Yeah. Then you take Bram who was uh, Legends of in Concert musical director for like 20 years. So you got a good group. Yeah, there. so I, I, and I'm lucky enough you. that when I make a phone call, yeah. uh, I, I get these... I have like another guy that's going to be... Uh, I couldn't get Bram. Bram is on the road for the next gig. Yeah. But I got Danny D. Morales really? for the next gig. And Danny is with uh, Dion Warwick. Uh -huh. And Danny actually had a national act that called him at the same time. And he pushed that one aside to do the guitar night. Oh, wow. And he subbed it out. He has a friend of his to take that one so he could do our guitar yeah. night. So occasionally you get lucky with some good, really good players out there. And, and most of the, the really good guys are really, real, and many women, I should say, sure. are just super nice. Yeah. You know, it's the, they're the ones that are just like the salt of the earth. They're, yeah. You know, they, they do anything no for egos, you. No, no egos. You come no. up, you know, they, you know, they're, they're all of equal star quality and they, yeah. they don't, you know, they just come up and do their job, play yeah. their role. Yeah. Wow. We have, I, I just want to lose one thought. We, before yeah, the break. We talked about how to combat uh, automation and AI. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to lose that because our audience has been sitting hear, there. Going, I want to hear oh, this. Yeah, yeah, what, what, yeah. We didn't forget. We didn't forget. <laughs> so the three three ways to combat anything like that, and we saw that during the, industri during the uh, automation that was done in the 1960s, okay. is number one, you either create the automation or the AI. Number two, you QA it, quality assurance, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do, right. or you do what it can't do. Those are your three ways to combat it. That's it. And, there you know, you people, people in music, in music is everything. Yeah. Everybody needs to really think about retooling yeah. themselves every three to five years because the business and business is moving Absolutely. so fast now. I mean, it's wow. even faster than when I was, when I was working, you know, it, we used to say that, you know, and you've had any germ of any idea, you better have it, have it out and implemented within six months because it's already obsolete. Wow. There used to be a comedian that used to do uh, back in the day when VCRs were coming out. Yeah. And he said, would you have the latest one? Yeah, but it's now it's on sale. Why? Because we're bringing the new ones in the back. You know, it's like, <laughs> and, and, that's how, and that's how automation and technology is. If you're not retooling yourself, you know, newspapers, same thing. Yeah. When you see when newspapers that forgot that they were in the communication business failed, the ones that knew they were in the communication business flourished. That's they went it. to TV, radio, podcasting, they did whatever. It all. Yeah. yeah, and the minute yeah. you, and I think the same thing you see with musicians, if you think you're going to be a guitar player and or a pianist, whatever, you're going to see that the jobs are shrinking and, and you even look at the compositions that we're doing, there's there's AI that's creating things. Sure. Seth MacFarlane happened to do something, who was at Reynolds Hall recently, uh -huh. and he made a joke that he went to Jack. Chat GPT and asked them to write a pilot. Yeah. He said it was so bad. I love Chat GPT. Yeah, but he said he said the pilot was so bad that Fox ordered twenty two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but the point is, it, it yeah. can do it. You know, yeah. and uh, and sure. you know, so you're, you're so what you have to do is you have to figure out as as you're, if you want to stay relevant, what sure. do you need to do to to be to in keep... it? Are you in the guitar playing business or are you in the music business? Yeah. Which well, you're in the music business. For the moment. Yeah, for the yeah. moment. And then if yeah. I happen to be in the guitar business and there isn't that much for me to do, I'm retired. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. So you can flip back and forth. Yeah, yeah. you know, because then I could sit there and be be a little bit more pointed about what I want to do. Oh, yeah. Because it's just a luxury at the moment. But uh, but if you really want to stay in this business, you, and I, I tell some of the younger players, mm -hmm. I see them out there, and I, I hope hopefully they're not... I, I try to, you know, not be the old man giving them advice all the time, but I yeah. do tell them that they need to have multiple irons at the fire. That's right. Because if you have a business that's predicated on your physicality, what happens when you lose your physicality? Or you're not that's young true. enough. Because part of the things about being in a music business is, can you play? Sure. Are you pretty enough? Or what, are, are you at the demographic that they're looking for today? You can be the greatest player on the planet. Right. But if you don't fit the demographic that's selling. Next. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe yeah. you need to hire the demographic and then be that manager. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I think people just need to think about, 
you know, multiple streams of income, which is what the, the newer, the, the latest generation is thinking about anyway. It's yeah. a gig economy. They're not, That's right. you're not going to sit in some office. They don't want to no. do that, but they want to have multiple streams. The only thing I say to them is make sure your business is profitable. Yeah. You know, you can't, that's one thing you see in the music business is a yeah. lot of people run a business that's in the negative for like decades. And that's, uh, yeah, that's not the way you run a business. No, no, no. no. So going forward, mm -hmm. what do you see for yourself? Oh, wow. Going forward, what do I see with myself? Well, uh -huh. I put you on the spot. Didn't yeah, I? you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, you, you get one of those, you know, those things when you're in, 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 in your yeah. job. What do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> Yeah. So where do I see myself in five years? Well, I see myself still, you know, still playing and yeah. staying active as long as my physicality uh, stays in place. I think, um, yeah, but I have other things that I do too, right? I mean, I've got an eighth degree in black belt. I've got, uh, so, you, you know, have a black belt. Yeah, eighth degree black belt in ninjutsu. So I've got that. Um, yeah, I'm still heavily into technology. So, uh, you know, I, I, I That's important. You know, do my video. Yeah. I stay relevant on that kind of yeah. stuff with AI yeah. or, or even by doing my own videos. Like a lot of the videos you see here that, sure. I, that we just showed today. Yeah. That was professionally shot and mixed down. I have a guy, Brett Hansen, who does those things for oh, me. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, Brett does a great job. Yeah. And then what I do is I will, I can make sizzle reels and cut them down and things like that. So yeah. I'll stay active on yeah. that. Um, you know, I still get calls to consult. You know, occasionally still people still want my opinion on some yeah. things, which is uh, yeah, nice. I still Absolutely. get a lot of uh, questions about career. A lot of people that are, as they're approaching retirement, start calling me in my old company. And like, how'd you do it? What are you doing? Why are you, you know, what, yeah. you know, you, cause I, I had the unique distinction of when I retired, cause I retired at, I was 57 when I retired. And I normally, when people retire that age from Accenture, they go into industry. They'll go to some company that was a client, right. things yeah. like that. Nope. I knew, I didn't you know, had I didn't know that just the door no? hit me on the way out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was, uh, I was, uh, you know, my wife was up in Canada at that time and we, uh, because we have a home up there too. So I, we do boating. Yeah, we do yeah. boat. So we live on a lake oh. up there. So we have boating. And, what part of Canada? So we're in British Columbia. We're on the far Eastern side in oh, Kootenai okay. Lake. That's, that's beautiful. And beautiful we're just, three, we're about three hours, three and a half hours north of Spokane. Uh -huh. So we've got, you know, so we're on the lake up there. So then, you know, there's got summer boating and, and freezing and you know, find warm spots where we go yeah. swimming. Yeah. I love the cook. So I, yeah. there's always stuff that for me to do on that, yeah. on that front. So I, I've got so many irons in the fire. Yeah, I mean, yeah, when, when I, I'll be bored, I guess, when I'm dead. That's right. There's plenty of time to lay down then. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've got so many things going on that even if anything, like I always tell my, I used to tell people along the way, yeah. the younger, younger people that are coming up, that you have to have many things going on. So if one thing isn't doing well, you've got something else that right. is. If you put everything in, all your eggs in one basket, like if your job, yeah. I saw a lot of people, in fact, one of, a couple of my colleagues called me, they retired after me. They were yeah. older than me. Yeah. They retired after me. And they said to me, wow, you know, I was depressed for six months after retirement. Jesus, I said, I was depressed six months before I retired. Yeah, you know? that's right. You know, you've got like, plenty you of other things to do. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, what, what else would you like to tell our audience before we close today? Well, I think, uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you for having me on. Well, so this was you. a lot of fun. I also want to thank Nelson Sardelli because <laughs> Nelson is my, my unpaid manager. Yeah, he, who, he's, he's amazing, isn't he? Yeah, no, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's great because he's going out there. Well, here, you need to talk to this one. Here, get yeah. on this show. Here, yeah. go do this. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so uh, a few things. So, so I think uh, what I want everybody to know is like, we've got, you know, Tony Pereira's Guitar Night, which is uh, now being registered as a trademark. Wonderful. And uh, so I yeah. got that in the way. But, you know, go out there and support your live music. Uh, come see us, you know, and you can go to Tony Pereira. Uh, Tony Pereira's Guitar Night on Facebook, and you'll see our schedule when we're out there playing. That's perfect. Um, the beauty of that one, too, is uh, it, you know, I've been using John quite a bit because we've just been having a good time. Yeah. But the actual premise really is to have rotating guitar players with you. So I've had a few other guitar players, uh, national guitar players, international guitar players that have said, hey, I could, I'd like to come and do it. Like uh, uh, Doug McDonald, uh, who's out in L.A., said, that, hey, I'd love to come do this. Yeah. So we, we're probably going to be bringing some of the folks in for that, too. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah. I'm going to definitely look. I'm going to the next one. Absolutely. Great. Yes. Love to have you there. Yeah, it'd there. be fun. And any feedback, too. I'm always yeah. open to feedback. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today. That's our show. And Tony was fantastic. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share Susie's Las Vegas.